All right, let's start chapter 16. Chapter 16 deals with population ecology. And so what ecology is, is ecology is the study of interactions between organisms and also their environment. All right, so it's not just organisms with other organisms, it's also the organisms uh, interacting with the environment that's around them. So now let's take a look at the levels of ecological organization. So the first level here is an organism level. So this is showing just a single lobster, and so that's an individual living thing. Above that is a population level. So there's a group of individuals uh, of the same species living in the same area at the same time. Uh, so, you know, when biologists look at what a population is, we're looking at uh, those individuals having the opportunity to reproduce with other members of their own species. And if they're not living in the same area, they can't reproduce. And if they're not living uh, in that same area at the same time, they can't reproduce. So that's how we limit what a population is. Uh, above the population is a community level. And this is all the organisms that live in a certain area. So that would be the lobsters and clams and sea anemones and fish in that area, uh, but as well as the microorganisms and any plants that might live there as well. Above this is the ecosystem level. So this is all the organisms in a given area along with a non-living environment. So, you know, now you're seeing the water and the sand and so on, all right? Now above this is the biosphere level, and this is uh, the parts of the planet where life is possible. So that's pretty much the entire globe. So this is all the ecosystems uh, together. Now let's take a look at population dynamics. And so looking at population growth, so let's look at characteristics of a population. Uh, the first characteristic is just the population size. So this is a number of individuals uh, contributing to the gene pool of a population. Uh, next is population density. So this is a number of individuals uh, that occur in a unit area. So this, uh, you know, so how many per square mile or per hectare or per acre or however you want to look at, all right? So this indicates how those organisms live. So do they live individually? Uh, do they live in groups? Uh, so that's what we're looking at there. Next is population dispersal. It is a pattern which individuals are spread within an area. So sometimes we see a uniform uh, dispersal. Uh, dispersal here, they're evenly dispersed. And typically what happens here is uh, this uh, are typically done with territorial organisms or there's a strong competition for resources. So when we look at these penguins here, uh, they're on a nesting site and so they're spread apart from each other uh, so they can have a nice place to uh, lay their eggs and raise that egg. Uh, these guys are typically pecking distance apart from each other. So if they get too close, the other guy pecks them and so on. Uh, next is random. And this is what we see with dandelions, wherever dandelion seed can land uh, and start to grow, well, it starts to grow. So here, there is no pattern uh, for random. Lastly is clumped, uh, and clumped is due to an uneven distribution of resources uh, or social interactions, right? So uneven uh, distribution of resources, so like, uh, you know, if you think about an oasis in a desert, that's where most of the life would be because uh, the water is there in that oasis and not outside in the desert. So all the living organisms, or most of them, I should say, live in that area. Next is uh, social interactions and what we see here uh, with these fish by schooling together or other types of prey animals herding. What this does is this uh, provides protection because now you have many more eyes that can see a predator. But also, if a predator does get close, uh, the chances of it getting you are reduced because you know, you're just one of many now, so that reduce, reduces your individual uh, uh, person being preyed upon. Okay, let's look at uh, patterns of population growth. Um, so there are two major patterns in population growth. Uh, one is that the organism, um, uh, you have organisms that reproduce once and then they die, all right? So here they're gonna to cease to grow as an adult and they're gonna expend energy in reproduction and then they're gonna die. So a lot of insects will do this, you know, uh, like mayflies and cicadas. Uh, they'll emerge from being their larval stage. They'll reproduce after they reproduce and the females lay the eggs, uh, then the adults will die. So they've given off all their energy to that next offspring. Uh, a lot of the plants that we consume are like this as well. Uh, you think of corn, corn it doesn't come back year after year after year. Uh, we have to constantly replant it. Then there are organisms that reproduce uh, throughout their lifetime. 
Uh, so they're going to invest energy in future survival. Uh, obviously, we are this, uh, you know, but you can think uh, a variety of trees are this as well. A lot of animals that you think of, cats and dogs and so on. Uh, they don't reproduce once and die. They reproduce uh, several times throughout their lifetime. Now, um, let's look at biotic potential. Biotic potential is the maximum population growth under ideal conditions. So with biotic potential, we're saying there's nothing that's hindering the growth of a population. So there's no predation, no disease, anything like that. All right, so disease uh, and predation and competition for resources, that's what we would all lump together as environmental resistance. These are environmental factors that limit the population size. Now, next is a realized uh, rate of population growth, or also known as R. This is the number of individuals added to a population minus the number that's lost from it. So uh, the realized rate of population growth is going to be births plus immigration, which is new individuals entering and residing in that population. Uh, and we're going to subtract that from deaths and emigration. So emigration is the individuals leaving that population. All right. So if we look at a population uh, that has very low, um, uh, so very high biotic potential and very low environmental resistance, uh, what we see is this thing known as an exponential growth. I have no idea why, what that is right there, uh, but this is what we see with exponential growth is an increase in a population size in a J-shaped curve, where you have essentially two parts of it. You have this lag phase where growth is slow because the population is low, and then you have the growth phase uh, where growth is accelerating, all right? So it's very speeding up, all right? Uh, and so the human population is actually experiencing exponential growth. Uh, if you look at this timeline here, you can see here within the last, you know, a uh, few hundred years, uh, our population has uh, grown dramatically. We're at 1 billion uh, individuals there in 1850. Uh, we're like 7.3 today, uh, 7.3, 7.4. You see this little dip right there? Uh, that is due to the Black Plague that occurred throughout the 15 uh, to 1600s. Um, so, one of the things that a population may eventually get to is what is known as the carrying capacity, uh, or also known as K. This is a maximum population that a habitat can support. All right, and so what can happen sometimes is if a population overshoots its carrying capacity and it overuses those resources, that population uh, can uh, dramatically drop because of that overuse of resources. All right, so we like to think though, as, at a, as a population approaches K, uh, the growth of the population will slow down uh, and then it stabilizes. And so, you know, it won't flatline in a lot of cases, it will fluctuate around the carrying capacity. And that's what we see with most populations. Most populations aren't doing these boom and bust kind of situations. So, um, so this gets us what is known as logistic growth. Uh, and this is population growth that occurs in an S-shaped curve. And that's what you see with this darker green line is that logistic growth. So it has a lag phase, it has this growth phase, uh, and then it has a deceleration phase. So here's the deceleration phase. Uh, and so the rate of the population growth slows down because it's approaching uh, the carrying capacity for that environment. And then you have that stable equilibrium phase, which is this flat line there. And as I mentioned here, you usually fluctuate up and down around that line. All right. So. One of the things knowing this is when we look at this part of that logistic growth, this is where we're actually getting the most, that highest increase in acceleration. All right? And so this is used by uh, uh, ecologists and so on uh, to know what the maximum sustainable yield is, uh, which is half of what the carrying capacity is. So we harvest trees, when we get uh, uh, fish out of the ocean, uh, you know, there's typically a limit on those things. And that's what we're trying to maximize uh, that as much yield as we possibly can from there. All right. So, uh, you know, if you watch some of those shows, it's like, you know, like uh, Deadliest Catch or something like that, you know, they only can catch so much or their, uh, their harvest time is only a certain period. And that's trying to keep with that maximum sustainable yield. 
Uh, this uh, applies to hunters as well. They can only get so many tags per year uh, to try to keep that population uh, right there. So one of the things that we do with hunting is we try to send out as many tags uh, you know, in case the deer population gets too high, because it can get too high, and then if it gets too high, we can have uh, more uh, accidents on the highways because of that. So we try to keep their numbers, uh, you know, at you know this pace as well. Next, let's look at uh, influences on uh, population density, and one are density independent effects. So these are effects that are independent of the size of the population and act to regulate its growth. So these are abiotic factors, so non-living factors. So these would be natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, uh, fires, as we see here. So, you know, growth will occur and then you have uh, some natural disaster that knocks it back down. Next, the, uh, next are density uh, dependent effects. So here, these effects are due to the, are dependent upon the size of the population and act to regulate its growth. So this would be uh, predation, competition for resources, uh, parasitism, and so on. Uh, so as the population gets larger, uh, this has more of an effect. So this is showing competition between two different organisms here for a resource. All right, 